The Manchester United takeover is the single most important thing that could be happening to our club right now, but it's been silent. There's been no updates on anything to do with Sheikh Jassim or Jim Ratcliffe or the Glazers selling. There has been a report yesterday suggesting that the Glazers are pausing the takeover bid. What does that mean? Could they really do that? What I'm going to do in this video is run through, first of all, the facts that we know, and second of all, I'm going to explain why I feel the possibility of them delaying by a season cannot be ruled out. And I'm going to explain exactly why. I'll give you 10 minutes of your time. I think I should be able to bring you pretty much bang up to date with what's going on. It's not a video that I want to do anymore. I want to talk about the takeover being done, but hey, here we are, November to August, and not much has happened. If you, if you do learn something by the end of it, please consider joining the community. Drop a like on the video if you want. It's not really that sort of video, is it? Let's talk about it. Because we need to speak in the facts first and foremost. Number one, the Glazers have treated Sheikh Jassim and Jim Ratcliffe exactly how they have treated Manchester United fans since the beginning. Silence. Communication. Nil. That's what's happened. It's how they, it's like, it's their, it's how they operate. It's just they, they work in the shadows. They don't really tell the truth. They don't really speak properly. And the one fact that we know is that, look at this. this is, the market has reacted. Manchester United's share price has dropped over $4 in July from a, from a high, what was it, $25 just over there? $25 there just at the end of June. And now look at us, $20. So it's even more than 20%. The market has reacted and now we're seeing reports. So, that, so that, that's what we know in terms of the facts. The Glazers are treating the potential new owners of Manchester United exactly how they treated fans. And the market's not happy at it. The market is in as just as much radio silence as we are as fans. Which is why when this story came out yesterday, that suggests that the takeover has been paused, a, uh, like a wave of frustration came out of United fans. Because that's what it's turned into. Just like an, like an apathy, like an anger. A frustration that just boils over. It's the only emotion you got towards the situation now. Now, this in itself would be a huge piece of news. So my first thought is, okay, well, who's writing this article? It's written by Mark Douglas in iNews. And I'll be totally honest, it's kind of the first time I've heard his name linked to this. Mark wrote previously for the Newcastle Chronicle. I mean, he's, he's, not, a heavy hit. he's not a heavy hitter. So I would say take, well, everything, you've got to take everything with a pinch of salt when it comes to the takeover because they both signed NDAs, Jim Ratcliffe and Sheikh Jassim. So they're not going to be feeding it to the press. Could it be rain doing it to try and squeeze some extra pressure on bidders? I mean, maybe. We're speculating. And I suppose that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm, in, I'm interpreting this news as best as I feel possible. But what I would say is this, right? We go over to read the article first, okay? Perhaps the greatest threat to Man United's season is that the Glazer family pull up the drawbridge, refuse to sell, and their presence curdles into further toxicity, which is exactly what would happen. The longer we go in this convoluted process, the less than that can be discontinued. And this is what, something that I did. I've always said, look, from a logical perspective, they have to sell. And that still remains the case. But I'm really going to explain in about a minute or so, if I'm, I'm going to have to go and have a wash after, I'm going to put my mind in, my mind in the mind of the Glazers. What reasons could they have for delaying the process? And I'm going to explain that. Uh, I has been told that the takeover process has been effectively paused as far as at least one of the two main bidders are concerned, which basically tells me he's been hearing that from somebody close to Ineos. Because I doubt very much that Mark Douglas from iNews has got links to the Sheikh Jassim and the Qatari inside story. I might be wrong in that, but that's my own interpretation. Um, we've not been given any guidance at all on what comes next. There haven't been any requests to modify the offers to come up with a new round of bids as there was early in the process. There's just been no communication whatsoever. Hmm, that sounds similar, United fans. That's exactly how the Glazers have operated since they've taken over our football club. And it's exactly how they're operating now. Now, the reason that I've always had confidence, I suppose, that a takeover would go, th takeover would go through is I think there's a pretty good visual metaphor of the infrastructure of our football club, the stadium. I mean, the stadium's not in that condition, of course, but it's, it's heading in that, in that direction and it will do under the Glazers until capital investment comes in. We're talking big billions of investment for New Carrington, New Old Trafford, uh, other infrastructure investments, uh, further investments in the team. Sure, we spent over 380 million since Ten Hag took over. That's all on the credit card. The Glazers are putting not one, not even a pound, not even a penny into that. It's all from the company credit cards because we, as a company, 
are in dire straits. Like we're starting to make a bit of profit now in terms of the business sense, of, but it's it can't get sorted without major capital investment, which is why I've always held confidence that they will sell. But what I'm going to do now is, as I said, going to have to wash, have a wash after this. I'm going to put myself in the mindset of the Glazers. Why could they possibly have any sort of reason to delay any further? And this is what I've come up with. First of all, they're looking at this team that Eric Ten Hag has built and go, you know what? They're probably going to be better next season, aren't they? You know what? I mean, there's a real genuine chance that they could be considered title contenders come the start of May. They might still be in the hunt. They're back in the Champions League. So they might be thinking, right, well, the team's on the way up. So maybe if we delay it by a year, well, they might be in a better position to sell. Again, I told you, I'm just trying to put myself in their mindset. Second of all, that deal that we just signed with Adidas went up from 75 million sterling a year to 90 million. 1.1 billion in total. Glazers are sitting there doing that, rubbing their hands together. I say massive deal to do in the midst of a takeover. And the fact that it's gone up from the previous number shows in their, in their mind, the Glazers, that Man United are on the upward trend. And then on top of that, you've got the new Champions League format, which I think is quite an important one in this whole situation, especially when you think about a year pause and then you sell and all of a sudden you've got a new Champions League coming in the year after. That's something that they're going to try and drive up because look, you can see it there, a 50% increase in matches. You're not going to have a group stage anymore. You're just going to have one big bastard group where the top eight teams qualify. Then whoever finishes ninth to 24th, like a round of 16, the playoff game, an extra te eight teams go through. There's going to be 50% more Champions League games. And for the Glazers, they're looking at that going, more money, more money. And you know what a big thing, which is just so happens to have happened in the same summer that Manchester United are setting and the same summer that the Glazers are trying to find reasons to delay, is the emergence of the Saudi Arabian Super League, effectively. Well, it might be not, not called the Super League. It might, it might, is that actually the name of it? I don't know. Anyway, the Saudi Arabian League. Because we look at this, right? We look at the investment. I think this is a really interesting point to take. Because not only have you got Manchester United, as I said, being in a better condition as a club. Not only have you got Man United agreeing deals with Adidas that are major. Not only have you got the Champions League format, but you've also got the emergence of the Saudi League. And we look here at the total expenditure in the Saudi league and you can see down there they spent 400 million euros more than they sold from players in their league because there's no one who's selling 14 million euros they made who's going to buy anyone from the Saudi league 400 million you look at the premier league and you can see that's where the money is total expenditure wow 1.4 billion over 600 million sorry, 600 million euros spent more than has been has come in through sales and then we take a look at the other leagues. And this is what I mean. Look at these two. Saudi Arabia, 400 in the red. Premier League, 600 in the red. La Liga, 84 in the green. La Liga clubs are selling more than they are buying because they are not financially in a position where they can compete with the Premier League. That's not an isolated situation. Serie A, over 100 million euros in the green. They're selling more than they are buying. The Bundesliga. 134 million in the green. They are selling more than they can buy. There are only two leagues really right now who with big spending power is the Premier League and it's now this new Saudi league which is going to change things up. So all of a sudden at the time where the Glazers are thinking, hmm, should we stay on? Should we find ways and reasons to stay on? They've got United being better again, Adidas and a big deal and they think, okay, well, that's a... That's a uh, a sign of bigger things to come. And obviously the TV rights that will come with it too. Oh, the Champions League on top of that. All of a sudden, a huge, big, big money spending league. All these things combined. And they're thinking, you know what? Maybe we can delay by a year. And we don't have to put any sort of capital investment in. And this is, this is the clincher here. This is what I didn't, I suppose, maybe naively, I never entertained the concept of. They might be thinking, you know what? We didn't get the six billion. Man, they're greedy fucks. They've already withdrawn more money than they invested. So they're already in profit. And you're going to get a five billion offer. And they still want more on top of that. It's like billionaires are just uh, a, a breed of hum humans unto themselves, man. The greed is on a different scale. But maybe the maybe these two 
dicks, rats, whatever you want to call them. They're sitting there thinking, you know what? We could delay by one more year, not have to put any capital in, use the company credit card, ride this little wave of actually having a decent manager, despite the fact that we're trying to uh, sod them. And they're thinking, you know what? Maybe if we can wait that year, we can probably get that six billion. What do you reckon, Abraham? Yeah, what do you reckon? Yeah. That's the conversations that's going on. And if this is indeed correct, that's what's been behind all of this. I'm going to go and have a shower now because I've been in the minds of the Glazers and I feel dirty. But that might be exactly what's going on. And that might be exactly why they think that they can, without investing anything, because the capital investment to take Manchester United to where it's needed to be cannot be ignored. There's, there's, no, there's no other way around that. But maybe they're thinking if we can delay by a year, we can just ride that wave and get a better price at the end of it without having to put a penny in. That's the whole situation. That's why they might be pausing. That's why I think there's credence to that conversation. I've explained the logical read. Not logical, but if you're logical and they're filthy, mind. Anyway, I'm going to go and have a shower. You let me know what you think in the comments.